Jason Kuhn comes in for $2 million. Thanks for joining us, Jason. We wondered if you'd talk us through one of the biggest pots we've ever seen you play on a Triton poker event, a hand from Montenegro against Elton. Sure. You remember the hand? Yep, it's a difficult hand to forget. It was a, it was a big pot and a fun run out. Let's have a watch. Sure, I'll get it going. All right, so Jason Kuhn's gonna raise first one in. Uh, we're very deep. Um, looks like I have about 300 big blinds in front of me and there's a big ante in this game. So you have to play a few more hands than usual and they can't always be big pocket pairs. So 6-5 of hearts is a nice kind of sneaky hand to open here. Paul makes a call in the cutoff with 8-6 suited, which is also one of those sneaky little hands. Set hunting. And Tom is last to act on the button here, last to act in position at least, and flicks in a call with ace-10 off. And Elton's in the big blind with king-7 suited, makes a very, very standard call. So we're gonna play a four-way pot, which is kind of rare in no limit hold'em. Um, but to the flop we go, and it's, it's quite the action flop for me. Yeah. Kuhn flops a straight flush draw. Favorable for me, for sure. We're not all the way there, but we've got some hope. So I decided to check here, and the reason why is because we're playing very, very deep, and I think that my draw is good enough that I can potentially get someone to bet a hand like top pair, and I can start raising and get them off of it. Um, I have the four for the mega clean out. I also have the two um, straight flush outs. So but you're it, instantly thinking about taking an aggressive line. Yeah, it's, it's the kind of hand that occasionally, you know, I can't just always have a set whenever I'm check raising here. I can improve to hands that can value bet and I can make people fold better hands. So in this spot, it looks like Tom made a bet, um, a medium sized bet. And Elton just calls from the big blind with the bottom pair plus the backdoor flush draw, which is a little bit loose. Um, and I go ahead and raise, so it's like 24,000 euro bet. He can put a lot of pressure on these type of hands. Yeah. And now Tom's in an awful spot here. He has the kind of hand that I'm targeting to fold. Tom's thinking about what happened previously. Kuhn bluffed off a lot of his chips. Would Kuhn actually try and bluff off more chips? And he folds the hand. I end up being extremely surprised that Elton comes over the top and raises me again. So he's representing an extremely strong hand at this point. What hands are going through your mind? So his value range at this point should only be sets, maybe exactly ace eight, but he can't really expect me to put in my whole stack with worse than ace eight at this point. So I think even raising a hand like seven eight would be pretty reckless. This is horrifying for me because if he doesn't have a made hand, he's oftentimes going to be committing himself with a hand that has me in pretty bad shape, like Jack Nine of Hearts, Jack Ten of Hearts, Ten Nine of Hearts. Um, that being said, um, I'm forced to continue my hand. The question is, do I want to shove the flop? This was one of the first times I played with Elton. If I knew that he was just capable of ripping King Seven suited for 324,000 euros on the flop like that, I would have just went and elected to shove. But what I considered was okay, I can play this pot in position, there's a little over pot to play, and I'll just be able to make really good decisions on the turn. So it was your first time really playing with Elton, but had you looked into his game, had you studied him? Yeah, and I knew he was able to make like kind of erratic plays like this, because this is a quite a reckless play. If I have a value hand, he's gonna be in pretty bad shape. And like, I might check raise a hand like Jack 10 of diamonds with a nut gut shot and a backdoor flush draw or something, but most of my bluffs are gonna have a decent amount of equity. So it's a pretty courageous play by him to make on the flop. Um, and I'm extremely fortunate because he turned the nut flush draw with his pair and he elected to not shove. If he shoved, I would've been in a pretty bad spot and actually had to fold my hand because I had six high and it was very likely that he would just be putting it in with a hand like 10 nine of hearts. But he decides to make a medium sized bet. There's 740,000 euros in the pot and he bets a little under 400,000 euros. Do you think that was a mistake by him at that point? Um, I think shoving or checking would be a better better play for him here. Um, checking goes pretty well for him. He can, He's not loving it if I shove the turn, then he probably just has to fold with a pair in, a, in the nut flush draw. But I think his play is, is kind of a brutal one. What he's done is he's bet an amount that if I raise all in, he's just committed. Right. Um, so... It's effective, but it just happens to not be that effective against my exact hand, you know? And I'm glad he didn't do it, but a shove 
would accomplish a few things. It would get me off hands that are really high equity, like let's say even even a hand like Jack-10 of hearts at this point, it's the double gutter and the flush draw probably pay off, but my hand specifically and a couple other big flush draws I would have to fold. You made the call. The reason that I elected to call the turn rather than shove is because I, I'm very confident that after he puts in 400,000 with another 500,000 to play, he's not gonna fold if I shove. So I don't think I really have any fold equity at this point, and I have six high. But if he still has a hand like 10-9 of hearts or Jack-10 of hearts, that has me in awful shape, um, there occasionally will come a river card that's a brick, say specifically like an ace offsuit, and he's unlikely to follow through again with a jack high missed flush draw, and I can move all in with my six high and get him to fold the hand on brick rivers oftentimes. Mm -hmm. But I think that calling the turn is significantly better than shoving the turn for me because I get to bluff him off the missed hearts sometimes when the river breaks. And I river the absolute nuts. River's a four. Jason Kuhn makes the nuts uh, straight. It's 1.5 million in there. Oh, yeah, okay. That's river good. hits. You literally couldn't have selected a better card. That is the absolute dream. And I remember thinking to myself, I'm going to look at Elton, and I'm not going to look at the river card until he's acted. So I just wanted to... It's not like I... Th I think Elton's played so much live poker that it's not like I'm going to get a live tell from him. But I really wanted to, the pot was enormous at this point, and in order to play the biggest games and high stakes, you have to detach yourself from kind of thinking, okay, there's, there's a nice house laying in the middle of this pot right now. And you can't really think about it in real world, real world terms. You just have to think about it like, okay, this is my situation. I'm going to look at him, and once he acts, I'll figure out what I'm going to do. What is that feeling like when you've been staring at Elton? You look back down at the board, and I you see your dream card. I'm definitely um, a human. I, I think that a couple of, say, I have a few mentors that may be completely detached in a situation like this, but I would be lying to say that I, I wasn't, obviously wasn't extremely excited once I saw that card. <laughs> Jason Kuhn oh, just praying for Elton to shove. So Elton tanks, and I think he considers the bluff shove, and I'm actually blown away um, after he checks. So he checks, he gives up. Jason Kuhn's gonna shove. Obviously I move all in, and he makes a big fold in my opinion because even though he doesn't beat much, he does exactly beat a few combos of hands. The main ones that um, that he's beating are if I have 10-9 of hearts or 10-9 of diamonds, I get to the river this way. Right. If I have jack-10 of hearts or jack-10 of diamonds, I may fold the flop with jack-10 of diamonds, but specifically jack-10 of hearts, 10-9 of hearts, and I'm shoving for 570, so I'm shoving for third pot, so he doesn't have to win very often. Yeah. He has to yeah. win, you know, one in four times. If Jason Kuhn had a, a hand like king-queen of hearts, he'd probably just check it back because usually he's up against two hearts himself, so nice show fold, oh, can't on, show the bluff. Show Jason Kuhn wins 789,000. I mean, I'm never really the guy to kind of like whip uh, bluff over in somebody's face or whatever, but they were all teasing and I showed him like a five of hearts or something and then Instantly after I was like I had six five of hearts. <laughs> I wasn't bluffing. Yeah, that, that was a that was a fun one Well, thanks for talking us through that sure. Jason fascinating look and a little insight for all the people at home that watch and just wonder What is going on inside your mind and uh, we'll have to talk to you about some other hands in Absolutely. future. Absolutely. Thanks